Hello and welcome to Learn Digital Design. This will be our 12th Inkscape tutorial. If you haven't viewed our previous tutorials, you can find them on the web at www.learndigitaldesign.com. And if you are a pro already, you can certainly move ahead to some of the more advanced lessons. Okay, and now we're picking up directly where we left off with tutorial number 11. If you haven't viewed tutorial number 11 yet, you can go back and view it at www.learndigitaldesign.com and find our video section. So uh, we talked before about the, this text panel and the different things you can do with the text panel and the, we've uh, talked about the font family, style, and layout, and line spacing. Uh, we've got our font selected with the style and layout. So now uh, let's look up here and you can see that there's another tab where it says text here. If you come to this tab, you can actually adjust the text directly from here without having to go back into your workspace. So now we've edited this text and as everything with everything else with the text and font panel it doesn't adjust it in real time we need to click apply to apply these changes and now you can see that these are applied let's go back to the font now we can choose some of these other layout options that weren't really available before because we didn't have more than one line let's go over here and center our text once again click apply our text is now centered we could choose to align it right or justify it as well. Let's play with the line spacing a little bit. Let's go to 200%. This is going to cause these lines to be effectively double spaced. The exact same amount of space as it takes to cover one line is going to be what it takes to, uh, what the span is going to be between these two lines. Let's go to a really low number. Let's go to 50%. Now, with 50%, anything less than 100, like we talked about, is going to cause some of these to overlap. This is these are overlapped. Uh, you may have some situations where you want to get some text really tight up on uh, the upper line, and there may be some reasons why you even want to overlap. But it should be rare. You'll most likely be working with at least over 100. 100 should just bring it exactly to the bottom of the first one. So. Here you can see where this, the top of this F and the bottom of this G are right there at each other. So that's 100%. Standard is 125, which is what it starts at. this and what if we want this text to be wavy what if we want this text to uh, follow a path say something like this what if we wanted this text to line up on this path well we could go and make one letter at a time and then rotate each letter and set it in place or we could use a function here on Escape where we set this text to the path. And what we're going to need to do to do that is select the text, hold down the Shift key, and select the path. So now they're both selected. Go up here to Text and select Put on Path. Now you can see that this text is on, on the path. One thing though, some of these letters are too close and maybe need to be spread out. This is where we're going to get into some kerning. And you can do this manually with Inkscape. What you're going to need to do is come over here to the text, um, the text objects tool, and you're going to need to select your text here. And you don't need to highlight anything because it just works from in between this area. So let's get some space in there. How do we do that? Let's hold down the Alt key and 
and push the right arrow button. Like magic, it starts to move these apart. Now we can use just the left arrow button to move to the left side of the A. And let's put some space in there. Isn't this neat? Alright. Well, what else can we do with this manual kerning? Let's see. Let's take it off of this path for me to show you. Come up here to text and remove from path. The text is removed from the path and it also has maintained the kerning that we set. So let's get these maybe set back up. You can also move these letters up and down like I accidentally did a second ago. You can hold down Alt and move up and down for all kinds of effects here. The uh, Alt key and the left angle bracket will move all of the letters closer together at one time and the Alt key and the right angle bracket will move them farther apart. The Alt key and the left bracket key will rotate a letter individually. And the, it'll rotate to the left. And the Alt key and the right bracket will rotate the opposite direction. And these are the basic tools that we have to edit text. There's many, many things that you can do with text. Um, but knowing the basics are what you, those are going to be the building box, blocks for what you're going to need to start doing the more advanced stuff. So now that you know the basics, you can start using your uh, creativity to create some really interesting things with text. You can also apply gradients to text. You can convert text to objects so that the vectors can be edited just like any other object. So this pretty much covers the basics of text, and we will do a lot more with text once we get into a lot of our actual designs. But for now, this is the end of this tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.